मन्मना भक्तो मद्राजी माम नमस्कुरो मामे वैश्यस्युत्वैवम आत्मानाम मत्परायन हाँ मन्मना भव इस वन ऑफ़ द मोस्ट वेल नोन वर्सेस इन द भगवत गीता ऑल द ऑफ़ कोर्स द मोर वेल नोन वर्स इज़ द वर्स दैट कम्स अ लिटिल लेटर व्हिच इज़ द वर्स 18.65 that verse is nearly identical to this verse with the major difference being that 18.65 focuses primarily on what Krishna can do whereas 9.34 focuses on what we need to do so Krishna states over here manmana bhava mad bhakto he says that मन मना फिक्स योर माइंड ऑन मी भव मत भक्तो बिकम माय डेवोटी मत या जी वर्शिप मी माम नमस्कुरो बो डाउन टू मी मामे वैश्य सी माम एवैश्य सी मीन्स यू विल कम टू मी युक्त वैवम युक्त वैवम मीन्स इन दिस वे बिंगस एंगेज युक्त एवं आत्मा मत्परायण विथ योर होल एंड सोल बींग डिवोटेड टू मी So this verse is like a, a summary call at the end of this chapter. We often in public speaking, it is said that I can conclude the speech with something memorable. At the same time, something also practical. So if it is a speech meant to draw people to some kind of action. then it is best that the speaker tell people clearly unambiguously and emphatically what is it that is to be done and do it right at the end so that people don't forget so krishna is concluding this ninth chapter with a such a clear and ambiguous and emphatic call for devotional action the whole nine chapter has been stressing this kind of action and arjuna completes and krishna completes the chapter in this last verse 34th verse by stating to arjuna and through arjuna to all of us how bhakti is most efficaciously performed now In the previous verse, Krishna had stated, "Anityam sukham lokam, ivam prapya bhajeswama." Therefore, having been born in this world, anityam sukham lokam, having been born in this world, bhajeswama, he tells him, "Therefore, worship me." So essentially, what Krishna has told is, "Bhajeswama." Um, the question may come, "How does one do bhajeswama?" there has not been an explicit verse talking about this how to perform bhakti although there has been some indirect indication when krishna said that patram pushpam phalam toyam in 9.26 or when he said yat karoshi dashnasi or before that when he said achanya chintayanto maam 9.22 or of course 9.13 14 when he said mahatma anastam maam partha and satatam kirtayanto maam so definitely krishna has talked about how bhakti is to be performed but here krishna is asking or rather arjuna is being told by krishna very clearly very unambiguously very emphatically how exactly bhakti can be performed and he states here that the best way to do so is through uh, the recognition that 
we all are at our core souls and we have we are essentially beings who are driven by our emotions and by our actions we are defined by our emotion we are defined by our cognition we are defined by our action cognition means the way we perceive and think emotions are the way we feel and actions are the way we do so of course thinking feeling willing these are the three uh, uh, facets or stages of our inner life which a uh, transform um uh, a suggestion into an action or some suggestion may come into our mind that may come either from external stimulus that we may perceive or that may come from a recollection of something uh, that is stored in our subconscious memory either way when it comes it's just a just a suggestion what about this so for example say <clears throat> we are just doing some some of our work and suddenly we remember hey today the cricket match is there and we may not even we may have not remembered it till that time but suddenly we remember and as soon as we remember then what we do that may be there because the thought may come either because you know that thoughts of cricket are impressed in our consciousness or it may be because we see some people talking about the cricket match the cricket match then we may think oh th- think from that thought f- thinking feeling willing and an action may happen we may just log into some website uh, to find out what is the update how is the match faring who is faring with how um, or whatever so basically not to direct ourselves in a particular avenue we can direct our cognition our emotion our action hmm? now krishna is telling us to do this man mana think about me so all actions begin first as thoughts as it is a thought is the ancestor to the deed so man mana and that means we need to think about krishna and that thinking can happen either by our placing ourselves in devotional stimuli in devotional environments where thoughts about him become natural from the external stimuli coming into us or we consciously try to recollect some things about krishna by which also we move closer to him so man mana then bhava mad bhakto bhava mad bhakto refers to our offering our heart to him when we recognize that krishna is our eternal master and we are his eternal servants then if we don't just stay at the level of thought we move to forwards towards the level of intentionality we oh sorry we level move to the level of emotions so i don't just think at the level of uh, dry detached contemplation let the thinking advance to the level of involved affectionate mm-hmm. emotional redirection so bhav mad bhakto then don't let it stay just at the level of emotions now bhav mad bhakto this is interesting krishna is saying become my devotee that means he is saying that the redirection of emotions is a matter of choice for us we can't just say that i don't feel devoted you know if we kindle and activate our devotional memories the devotional emotions will also come by that and those such we as we can become devotees and of course the easiest to one of the easiest ways to become devotees is to place ourselves in the association of those who are devotees in madhya ji mam namaskuru 
So then Krishna is talking about go into the realm of the actions. Worship me. Offer your obeisances to me. These are practical ways in which we can devote our heart to Krishna. Madhyaji Maam Namaskuru. And then he assures in this way, if your whole being is directed to me, then Ma Mevaishi, see, you will come to me. You will attain me. Yuktvaivam Atmanam Matparayanha. Because your whole life, your whole being will be offered to me. If you are if your cognition, if your emotion and your action are directed towards me, then your whole being is directed towards me and by this you will surely come to me. Thus the verse concludes with both a, uh, both a emphatic call for action and a, and a clear reassuring promise of redemption, promise of deliverance if we do the action. Thank you.